So, new to bowls, yet to play a singles game, or maybe you've played one and wasn't quite sure what you were doing, want to improve the chances you have of winning, then watch this video. Hi everybody, I'm Alec. Welcome back to my Lawn Bowls for Fun channel. As you know, these videos that I'm doing are aimed at new bowlers. And this year we've had a brilliant uh, season for bringing new people into the game. We've had a couple of dozen new members. Uh, we've converted about 18 or 20 of them to four members. And uh, they've really enjoyed the experience. One of the things we do at our club is we allow new people to enter a singles competition. So it's just those new, new people that enter. The, the reason they don't enter too many is because most bowling clubs, when you enter competitions, you have to do that even really before the season even starts. Whether it be um, club competitions or district competitions, especially if it's county or um, national competitions, you have to enter them before the season even starts because they start so early on in the season to get, to get through the whole season to, to the, final, the final games. So new people often join us throughout the season and they don't get the opportunity to enter too many competitions in their first season. So that's why we have a newcomers uh, competition and this year we had about a dozen people enter that competition. Some of the other newer ones didn't even get a chance to enter that. But at some point, whether it be this season or next season, you want to start playing a singles match. So I want to explain what that's all about and um, what the process is and give you some tips that might help you win those games. So usually um, somewhere in the clubhouse, they'll put a sheet on the board and you have to write your name on that sheet if you want to be involved in a competition. Or it may well be um, when you pay your membership each year, you may well have a list of competitions that you can enter if you wish. At my club outdoors, um, for example, I can enter the, the men's singles, I can enter the men's handicap singles, we have a two wood singles, and there's a club championship which male and female can enter. So there are the four singles I can enter. I can enter the district competitions. There's two of those I can enter, singles if I wanted to, and I can do various county and district competitions as well. So you can enter a lot of competitions. Once you've entered those competitions, the draw is made. And this is a good example of a draw in one of our competitions. This is the men's championship this year. Now, as you can see on that sheet, uh, I'm Alex Sharman, I'm A Sharman, and I'm in, the, in round one, I'm six from the top. So, because we've got 20 people in that draw, we've got to get it down to 16, which is why there's a prelim of four matches. Those four matches have to be played. You'll see the dates there, that you have to offer dates, I'll come to this in a minute, by the 14th of May and the game has to be played by the 11th of June. And once those games are over, uh, those, the four winners from those prelim games go through to round one, which is 16 players. Now I mentioned offer dates. So when you play in a competition, um, the first person drawn out, so for example, to come out in a draw for this uh, competition was T Fenby. So he was the first name and he had to play T Radford. And you can see there, um, they're the first two names to come out. Now the first name of those two is the challenger. And the second person is the person he has to challenge. Um, if you look further down, you look at me, for example, I've been drawn against a pace in the first round proper, but I'm not the challenger. Uh, Alan is. So what Alan has to do, because he's the challenger, he has to give me three dates. He has to give them to me by the 14th of June. The three dates he has to give me, and the rules vary on this slightly, but basically you have to give three different dates and different times and ideally different weeks 
to give that person a good chance to be able to accept one of those three dates. So for example, you wouldn't give three dates on like a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday all afternoon at two o'clock because if that person works, they obviously can't play that. So that's unfair. So what we do suggest at club level is we give at least one daytime date, an evening date and a weekend date. And that's also on different weeks, if possible, if you've got the time to do that. Certainly um, two one week and one another is acceptable. And the person being challenged has to accept one of those three dates. It sometimes seems hard uh, if someone can't play those three dates. Um, they have to really concede the game and that's a bit tough. So a lot of people are quite flexible. Uh, certainly when I give a game, I give those three dates, but I may give another two or three as well on top of that, in, just in case. But you should, in theory, only have to give the three dates. So if I know someone uh, at the club, if it's a club competition and I, I know they're retired, the chances are they'll be able to play during the day. And in fact, they, I would often ask, when's your preference? Um, and if they say I prefer to play daytime, then I give him three daytime dates. If he uh, can't work for other commitments, or he, he does work, for example, um, then I would give him a couple of an evening dates and a weekend date. So I'll try and be helpful if I can. At district and county level, though, um, it gets difficult, especially early on in the season when a lot of the competitions start. You often get given three dates, and if you can't make those dates, then that's it. You won't get offered any more, and you have to accept one of those three dates or, or concede the game, give the game away. It seems a bit tough, but you know, at the end of the day, um, three dates, you should be able to arrange one of those games that will be acceptable to you. And if you can't, then it's not the challenger's problem, really. It does seem a bit hard, but that's, you know, that's generally at, at district level and sometimes at county level, you have to be quite firm. Otherwise, um, you'll never get anything arranged. So, Alan Pace uh, gave me three dates and then I have to accept one of those dates. The other thing that Alan had to do was he had to book the rink. So you have to bear that in mind. You have to go up to the club as well. You have to see if rinks are free on a certain day you're gonna give. It's no good giving a date, for example, um, for a Saturday afternoon if all six rinks are being booked for a friendly game. So you have to see where um, there are vacancies on the rinks. And you then have to book that rink once it's confirmed which date he, your opponent wants to play. And then you also have to arrange for a marker. A marker who will help you, assist you in that game. So the challenger has quite a bit to do. And you can see on that first round um, that I played in, round one of the men's championship, I played Alan Pace. Uh, he organised the game, gave me three dates. Excuse me, there's an aircraft going over. And uh, I managed to win that game against Alan. It was a good close game, but I did manage to beat him. And then in the next round, you'll see, I am in fact the challenger then. So I have to give, I had to give Paul Sainsbury, the chap I was playing, I had to give him three dates and arrange the marker and book the rink. Um, and you can see that I didn't win that game. Paul beat me by one shot, I hasten to add. It was a really, really close game. I should have had him really, but he managed to beat me in the end. And um, he went through to the final. I didn't. So the first thing you have to do is you have to see whether you're the challenger. If you are the challenger, you have to give those dates. And you have to give them, you have to give them, for example, in round one, Alan had to give me three dates by the 14th of June. And we had a month to play. We had to play them by the 16th of July. So he give me three dates that were all on different weeks anyway. Uh, and in fact, you know, I could have played all three dates he gave me. So we just picked one that was convenient to both of us. So I just picked one and we, we organised the game. You must play by the date that's been mentioned. If you don't play, we have a quite a strict rule at our club here. In fact, you'll find most district, district competitions and county competitions are the same. If you don't play it by that agreed date, then you both have to concede the game. You know, unless one of you can't play, in which case they have to con let the organiser know they've conceded the game to the other player. But you must have a result, whichever way, 
by that date. If you don't, you both get knocked out and, and the next person in the next round will get a bye. The only dates you don't have to give is the, the final because usually the final is played on a particular day that everyone knows at the beginning of the year when the finals are going to be. So you don't have to worry about giving a date because it's already organised and usually uh, in the finals uh, the competition organiser will organise a, a marker for you so you won't have to do that either. But right the way through that competition, up, up and to and including the semi, semi-final, you have to um, arrange the dates between you. So, you've arranged the date, you've turned up, the marker usually turns up early to put, put the rink out, make sure it's all ready to go, and then you start the game. You have to toss a coin, there's usually the challenger, or the, the marker will toss a coin and it's the challenger that will call heads or tails. And then if he wins the toss, he then decides whether um, he wants to take the mat or give the mat away to the opposing player. If the opposing player wins the toss, he does the same. Usually, um, if you win the toss, most people tend to take the mat because they can then dictate where the mat's going to be on the green and so on. But uh, not always the case. It's the only time you can give away the mat in a game is the very first end or if there's an extra end for some reason in some competitions. But in the singles game there's not an extra end anyway. Um, you can't give the mat away like you used to be able to some years ago. You could give the mat away all the way through the game but you can't anymore. It has to be just that first game. Right, so the game's been organised. You're ready to go. You've turned up. It's, this is a four bowls singles game. And as you can see on the sheet, it's 21 up, so it's the first person to score 21 shots is the winner. Now, when you book the rink, if you're the challenger, it's always advisable to book a rink that you think you play well on. You're looking for every advantage you can get here. I know initially when you start playing, you're not quite sure about the rinks anyway. Uh, for example, on our bowling green, we bowl north to south one week and east to west the next week and we've got four different colours we play on so there's a lot of different greens that you you can play on and they're all slightly different but you do soon get to realise now there's a helicopter going over we live quite I live quite near an airport so we get this quite often where was I oh yeah okay so you do soon get to realise I mean for example on my green here at Farnborough North to south, I quite like rinks two, three, and four. One is okay, but I certainly don't seem to ever play well on rink five or six. So I wouldn't pick rink five or six to play on. I would pick one of the rinks I think I do well on. East to west, they're all much the same. I tend not to play on the end rinks though, one and six. I play two, three, four, or five in that order as well. I quite like rink two going east to west. So. Because you play well on those, that seems the obvious choice. And if it's free, you book that rink. That's your advantage. That's why you're the challenger. You have a slight advantage in picking the rink that you like to play on. Of course, your opponent might well play on that rink well as well. But that's, you know, just worry about yourself at the moment. Because you, after all, in a game of bowls, it's a bit like golf. You're playing the rink. Although you're playing against somebody, if you can read what the green's going to do, both sides of the green, you've got a better chance of getting your bowl on that jack. So pick a rink that, that you're used to. Having booked the rink, you then still got trial ends. If you go to another club, especially if you go to another club, and uh, you don't know that green, those trial ends are really important because you are testing the rink to see what it's going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put two bowls up the green towards the jack down near the end of the bowling club and I'm going to put one on each side and I want to see what the green is doing. So let me do that now and see how I get on. I've got three buddies sitting on the bench down near the clubhouse as you can see. So they're watching me, they want me to make a mistake. <laughs> right, here we go. That's not bad. 
it's a little bit thin, isn't it? So I need to take a little bit more green. Now I'll try one on the forehand. That's a better one. Now, I, lost, I must, lost my balance there very slightly. I normally bowl with a stick. I didn't bring the stick today, so I can lose my balance. But in fact, it didn't affect it. The bowl, the first bowl was a bit narrow on my backhand. So I now know to take a little bit more green. And on my forehand, it was pretty good shot anyway. It's ended up quite close to the, to the jack, so I'm happy with that. Some greens you go to though, I played on one just last week in Eastbourne in a, in a, in a friendly game. And on the trial end, you could clearly see that the, the green was obviously sloped because on one side, you had to go virtually straight down the middle of the rink. And on the other side, you had to go really wide. So on those two trial ends, that was pretty obvious. So that's why it's so important to use to go up both sides. Don't put, but just because you're good on one hand and not the other, if you're a better backhand player, don't put them both up on the backhand because you don't know what the, the forehand's going to do if you get blocked. So do put one up on each side. It's really important. So that's the first tip. Make sure you, uh, you use the trial ends to good effect to find out what the green's doing. As I said, you are playing the green. If you, if you can learn to read that green, what it's doing, you're going to beat the opponent you're playing, hopefully. Right, so the next thing is, where do you place the mat? Well, again, it's, it's your preference, really. If you've got control of the mat, usually on a trial end, it doesn't really matter where you put the mat. You, you generally keep the mat quite a long way back, just maybe over the two meter mark and send the jack quite a long way down the green because you want to see what that green's doing. But in a game, if you say, for example, prefer short to medium jacks, then obviously play, put the mat down where you like and play a short or medium jack to your advantage. Especially if you know the player that you're playing um, isn't as good at short bowls. If you start losing a game, if things start going turning against you and you'll win an end, then think about what you're doing. Don't just put the mat straight back down again uh, where it's always been. You're losing the game, so you've got to change something. So take the mat up a bit. At the moment, I've got the mat just a couple of feet past the two meter mark. But if I find on that mat, where that mat is and where the jack is, I'm losing, I can't obviously do anything about it until I win an end. But if I win an end, I will change something. I'll either take the mat up, maybe another two or three meters, somewhere like here. And then put the same length jack down or maybe a little bit further. Or I can bring the mat right the way back to the two meter mark and do a short jack. Or I might want to do a full length jack. So you just have to change something. If you're losing the game, do something different with the mat to try and put the other person off and also to improve your game. I've seen too often people that put the mat in the same place the whole game and they lose and they wonder why. It's because the other person is playing well at that length. When I played Paul, I think you, I mentioned earlier, I, I played a, a chap called Paul Sainsbury, who's a very good player and he beat me by one shot. It was a strange game because on one end, we were playing east to west and on one, one end I was taking the mat up considerably um, because that it seemed to be working for me. But going the other way, I took them, I kept them out right the way back and he was taking it up a long way. So we had different positions on the green that we both preferred. So whoever won the end was putting the mat to their advantage. So do make sure you do that. Do place the mat where you, th where you think you're going to um, be a better, be able to bowl better from. And if it's not working, change something. You've got nothing to lose uh, by changing something. Another game I watched, uh, uh, another new person, and this actually, um, this, this again a lady, she's a very good bowler, she's got huge potential, but she made one mistake in that game. I didn't say anything obviously to it while, while the game was playing on, but afterwards I did suggest to her something. Um, 
when she was getting near the jack, she kept drawing and she was doing really well. But when the opposition player drew one near, what she was doing then was trying to fire it off. The danger with that is, if you miss, <laughs> you're aiming at a jack. The jack is, is pretty small and for you, especially on the full length jack, for you to actually bowl and be able to hit that jack to take it back to maybe some bowls you've got further up the green or to take a bowl out, it's a very difficult shot to do. Hitting a jack, you've probably got less than 5% chance of doing it, and hitting a bowl, probably 7 to 10% chance, if you're lucky, if you're a reasonable bowler. So when someone draws a bowl near, just try and keep drawing, and try and get a second bowl. Don't try and fire them off. So what was happening in this game was that as soon as she, the opposition got a bowl near, she started firing, and invariably she was dropping them twos, threes, and fours because she had nothing near the jack. It's too risky. Sometimes you've got no option to fire, especially if it's a big target. Um, and especially if you've got another bowl reasonably near anyway, as long as you don't knock that bowl out. But do try and, it's a drawing game, and in a singles game, you just keep draw and draw, draw and draw again. It, it is a drawing game. Uh, the other thing is um, to think, play percentage shots. Now what I mean by that is, if you've got two options in a, in a match, um, let's give you an example. A few weeks ago, I was playing in, in a game and I was two down, but I had two bowls that were reasonably near and they were quite, the, the jack was in the middle and the bowls were either side. So by firing, the worst I could do was take one of mine out, but I did have a back bowl. But the line that I would normally like to draw was blocked. So I had an option to either try that, but it look, didn't look like that it was going to work out, or, or do a controlled weight shot, not a full firing shot, just to make sure I picked up the jab, because I did have a bowl at the back. And that was worth a try. Normally I wouldn't try and uh, put weight onto a bowl to move the jack back, but frankly, the line was blocked. I thought that was a better option, because if I did move that jack, um, the jack would have gone back, I'd have scored two shots. In fact, I'm just going to set up a, a little reconstruction of that game that I played just to show you the options that were open to me. So uh, just watch this. I've got the orange bowls. You can see I've got two that are fairly near to the jack, but I'm two down. Now, there's not really a draw shot here. First of all, if I did try and draw those two bowls on the jack, I just, they're just going to hit those bowls and probably... Um, but also, short are two other bowls, um, which are right in the draw line anyway. Now, if I only had one uh, bowl in the head, for example, I don't know, let's just say that was the situation. Then for me to fire at that or to send a controlled weight down, if I get it wrong and take this bowl out, I'm going to drop four bowls, four shots. But by having two in the head, which I did, they were third and fourth shot, it was worth having a go at those two bowls because a couple of things could happen. First of all, I've got a shot at the back that could be useful if I should take the jack through. And there is a chance that I can go through those two bowls that are short and take the jack through, or I can hit the two bowls anyway. And this, this is what would happen. Let me just try and demonstrate. Right, so there we are, I've got two shots. In fact, I might even have the third one in. You can see there that a draw shot wasn't really on, but the controlled weight was. So there's a bigger percentage chance of success by doing that controlled weight than, than a draw. But normally, in a singles, I draw nine times out of 10. But sometimes that sort of shot is required and you can see it paid off for me there. I took both the opposition bowls out and carried the jack through. So you have to play percentage shots. If you think you've got a better chance of doing one shot over another, then think about it and have a look at it and take that shot. Well, a few more tips that I can give you. First of all, take your time. There is no hurry. A singles game doesn't last that long anyway. Fucking hell. 
so take your time. There is no hurry. Uh, it's not a race. Um, if you want to ask questions uh, of the marker down the other end, then do so. If you're not sure who's holding shot um, or how far your last bowl was through, then ask those questions. Um, it's surprising that although you can judge the width that your bowls have gone on the green, you can't judge the depth they've gone. So you may think you're nearer or further away from the jack than you really are. So do ask that question. That's what they're there for. When your opponent has the mat, um, watch what he does. Watch the line that he takes, especially if he's finding that line better than you are. If he's left-handed and you're right-handed, you've got a problem because you're bowling on a slightly different part of green. But you can still get a pretty, uh, pretty good idea how far he's going out. And uh, so do keep an eye on what your opponent's doing. In fact, the singles game, you've really got to focus on the whole game. Any team game, generally, you get a bit of a break after you've bowled. Um, but with a singles game, you don't. You've got to concentrate the whole time. You've got to be focused on what you're doing. Not only when you're bowling, but watching your opponent, what he's doing as well. Uh, some people find that very hard to do that all the way through a game. But the, when the, the players that do well in singles are the ones that do focus. If you're down, um, I've seen so many times when people are, are not holding shot and they put a bowl up and it's short. So try never to be short when you're, when you're not holding shot, when you're one or two shots down. Give yourself a chance to win. If anything, bowl a yard through so it's gonna go at least past the jack. Give yourself a chance. Uh, I think a lot of people say um, risk to win. So you've got to risk doing something if you want to get that shot back. So never be short if you're down. And of course, the last and uh, probably the most important thing is never, ever give up. I've seen games that have come back. Um, in fact, I played in a game some years ago now against a very good player. He was on 20 and I was on nine. And I came back to win that game all right, it doesn't often happen, but it just shows you, you should never give up. I've seen so many games where a player is on 19 or 20 and just can't get that last shot or two. And someone that's only scored nine, 10, 11 shots have come back to win it. So never give up. The game can change suddenly. Always try to win every shot. You've only got to get one bowl near that jack each time, each end, you've got four bowls. Doesn't matter what you do with the other three, as long as you get at least one there, you can come back from being a long, long way back in a normal forward singles game. If it's a two-word singles where you're up against the ends, where you're playing 21 ends, you do run out of time eventually. But in a, in a normal forward singles game, where it's the first person to score 21 shots, it doesn't matter if you're several shots behind, you can still got time to pull those back. So never ever give up. Okay, so uh, that's about it. We covered quite a bit really, haven't we? But let's just recap on those important points. The first thing is setting up the game after you've entered a competition. You need to select a rink. That's if you are the challenger. Select a rink and agree with your opponent. You've got to give them three dates. Um, arrange a marker and then toss the coin before the game starts and then don't forget do those trial ends in fact I think I forgot to mention earlier that in a forward singles game you can use all four bowls in the trial ends uh, it's the only game you can do that normally it's just one each side but you can in fact put up two each side in a singles game if, if you if you wish so once the game starts, uh, do think about your, the placement of the mat. Place it to your advantage where you think you, you can play better in that position and also the length of the jack, play it to your strengths. Um, take your time, there's no hurry in a game of bowls, or certainly a single game, it's not a long game anyway. So just take your time, don't be rushed. Use the marker down the other end of the green, uh, get some information from him. If you're not sure about who's holding shot or how far your last bowl was through or short, get that information from him. That's what he's there for. Um, visit the head if need be. If you're really not sure what to do, don't do it every end, of course. It'll take forever to do that. But you can visit the head if you're really not sure what shot, what shot you want to do. Uh, keep focus. You know, it's so important to keep focus on the game, concentrate on the game. 
not only when you're about to bowl, but watch the opponent, see the line he's taking, if he's finding the line better than you. So do watch him, keep focus, really important. Don't be short if you're, if you're down, if you're one or two shots down, dropping a bowl short, we all do it. I've done it myself, but you know, do try not to make a habit to, to do that. Make sure at least you're up into the head if you can. And uh, of course, a singles game is very much a game of drawing. So draw, draw and draw and only use weight if you've really got no other option. And the last thing, probably most important thing, thing is never give up. A game is never over till that last bowl is rolled and someone scores 21. I've seen so many games won from almost an impossible position when that your opponent's been on 19 or 20 shots and they just can't get those last couple of shots and someone's come back from being eight or nine shots behind or even more so never ever give up so that's it everyone um, i hope you find that useful i hope it helps you uh, win those singles games and um, keep well keep safe and i'll see you again soon